Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It's Sunday, July 18th. And today we are airing the second part of our interview with Lighty Klotz. I mean, it's so funny. It's like the, the description of who this person is. He is an academic in lots of different areas. So it's kind of interesting to me. He has written this book, really interesting because it talks about how we can kind of reduce things in our lives. Like you can add or you can subtract, right? One of the cool parts of this book is that I wrote this phrase down, he mentioned, and he said, you want to rearrange your mental furniture. I love that. Anyway, today in the interview, in this part, we're going to talk about how you can subtract Tracked consciously, right? Kind of the mental pruning and how to get you more focused. So here is part two of our interview with Lighty Klotz. There's a few things in the book that really popped out of me. First of all, like I love that you you sort of sprinkle in some of the creative people mm-hmm. in here, whether it's Picasso or, you know, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. The elimination of the unnecessary is what Picasso said. And uh, the Little Prince's author said, Mm -hmm. perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. Chinese philosopher, you know, uh, subtract things every day. So there is something that is, I guess, in the brains of some of these really creative and, and deep thinking folks that they're trying to tell us something here, and yet it's very difficult to do. So you say that we've got to start subtracting consciously. How do we do that? That's the value proposition of the book. I mean, that's why I felt like I should write it is because if people understand why this is happening, then it can help make it so we don't need a quote for every single situation in our lives, right? I mean, and Marie Kondo is like telling us the same thing for our closet. Cal Newport's, you know, helping us with our digital lives, reminding us to subtract. And and so, you know, hopefully the book kind of rearranges your your mental furniture so that you're always thinking about this as an option. But should you not want to, should you not have time for that, you can, um, <laughs> one thing is to subtract first. Why this works, I mean, that seems obvious, right? But oftentimes what, we, what I talked about with the fundamental issue in our thinking here is that we add and then move on without even considering subtraction. So if you're able to kind of, shift your mindset so that you always subtract first, or at least just consider subtracting first, then you've kind of overcome the thinking obstacle there. I mean, then you've still got to figure out ways to to implement it, which is, which is challenging. And then the other thing is to put in place cues. And this is one of the things from our experiments where we would remind people to add that they could add or subtract. The reason we did it in our experiments was to show that, um, you know, then when This reminder, which reminded people of both, what happened was it increased the rates of subtracting. It's like, well, big deal. It's a reminder. Of course, it increased the rates of subtraction, but it didn't increase the rates of adding, which was great because it showed the adding reminder was redundant with what people were already thinking. The subtracting reminder was bringing new ideas to mind, which is what we showed in our paper. But, you know, flip that around. It's like, well, I can provide cues for myself in my life to remind myself to subtract, right? So when I do my to-do list each week, I also force myself to think of stop doings. And so that reminder prevents me from overlooking subtracting in that situation. And I think, you know, if you're thinking about it in terms of money management or anything, you could think about, okay, as I sit down to make this decision, or as I'm thinking about this decision, what cue could I put in place to, to remind myself to take away? So those okay, are- Wait a second. I want to know what you take away. Like, give me an example. Like, I'm going to just look at my I'm list right here. Hold on. I have, a, I totally have a list right here. And I tried, <laughs> and I love crossing off a physical list. So I'm old. Yeah. Okay. And I, I really do. There's something sick about it. It just feels like I've accomplished something, but I'm looking at this and I'm trying to see what could I- cross off like what would well, you know it's it's more than crossing off so the, this is the same mistake my friend ben made who's who okay. like worked with me on the research forever and uh, and then like halfway into the research he came to me and he said hey i'm doing it i'm taking our research to heart i uh my my department chair tried to put me on this committee and i said i didn't have time and i said that's that's great ben um you didn't add but you didn't subtract and so A stop doing is actually saying like, okay, this is a thing that's on my calendar right now, like weekly or, you know, for this upcoming week or this thing that I'm just routinely doing. 
and I don't need to do it anymore. And so the, like for me, one a, a really helpful stop doing was checking, intermittent email checking is what I called <sighs> it basically. So, so checking email once a day. And that was incredibly helpful and it, it involved stop, you know, the, the intermittent email checking. So that, oh my that was God. fun. You know what? This is yeah. the thing. Newport was on our show. He's been on our, with us for two or three different times. Right, right. Yeah. I am so goddamned compulsive. I can't take a walk with my dogs. Okay. Uh-huh. And not check my email like five <laughs> times on that walk. God. It's hard. Yeah. Take it off your phone so that you don't look at it. Um, but I, I mean, it's, you know, what's, what's to be subtracted is different for everybody. I mean, maybe you just like checking your email five times on your walk with your dogs. No, yeah. it's not. It's no, it's compulsive. Yeah. It's sort of like, you know, in the nineties when um, I was a money manager and a wealth manager and, you know, I'd have these clients who worked at you know, technology companies, tech boom was going crazy and it cracked me up. They were checking their company stock price a hundred times a day. And I said, well, what do you think that's going to do? And it's sort of, I say the same thing to myself, but I'm so flawed because I'm a human being and it's really hard. I want to ask you about the idea of if you're a manager, like if I want to give feedback to somebody, I'm the boss, or even if I'm the person creating it, how do I make the argument that less is more, even though that's like annoying to say, but like you have to be crisper in your communication to create something that is shorter. And that's mm-hmm. why I think subtraction is so interesting, especially in the kind of work that I do. I mean, one is is getting at outside help, right? I mean, one of the reasons it's hard to subtract, especially for the stuff that we've created is that we become attached to it. Right. And so that's why, you know, professional editors and those people are so helpful, right? Because they can, they can be this external neutral observer who says, yeah, you know, this is, this stuff's great. And this other thing, not so much, let's, let's take it out. Um, so, so getting external help is really, really good there. One of the other things we do as managers, right, is, is try to add incentives to make things better. And this is another area where like removing barriers can often be a, a more useful thing to do. The The example I wish I used in the book, which I didn't come up with until after was um, there's research that shows that like taking a TV out of the bedroom leads to more intercourse in the bedroom. And so like you could imagine all kinds of incentives to try to get people to towards the behavior that that you want in that case but actually the best thing to do is to remove a barrier and so i think as as managers we want to make things better right and then it's intuitive to try to add to say hey what can we what incentive can we put in place what kind of you know punishment can we put in place but oftentimes the best thing to do is to think about okay what's what's the barrier here and and how can we how can we get rid of that? Yeah. What else about, I love this term that you use, conscious mental pruning. And what you mean by that is what you said earlier, which is, you know, you basically remind yourself that you can add and you can subtract. You know, we're coming out of this horrible COVID 16, 17, 18 months, right? People keep learning these lessons. They say, oh, you know, I don't want to forget this. And I mean, I'm not saying we should live like we are cloistered and, you right. know, socially distanced forever, but- what aspect of that do you want people to consciously consider in their post-COVID lives? Yeah, I mean, I think it's different for everybody. So I hate to be prescriptive, but, you know, for me, work travel, you know, it's just made it so obvious that 90% of my work travel was unnecessary. Like we, we jet off to these conferences to be in a room that you know, there's a thousand other people who work on the same research as me and I don't actually talk to them. I just listen to them. And I've had better connections to my professional networks over Zoom, not to mention like the the time impacts, the health risks to flying all over the place, plus the climate change impacts. So I think like not just automatically going back to all the exact same travel that we were doing and thinking about what we really care about in that case is like the human connection and what's the best way to create this human connection. We've, we've been shown that there are multiple ways to have that connection. And of course, like going back to in-person visits with grandparents, but I'm not going back to these, some of these work conferences. Um, So that's one. And I think the, the ideas is so important. I mean, that's my favorite subtracting quote is the one that's attributed to Lao Tzu that you mentioned before is to attain knowledge, you add things every day to attain wisdom, you subtract things every day. 
it's two and a half millennia old and still rings true and counterintuitive. And I think, you know, we've been forced to kind of really rethink some things. I, this is embarrassing to share, but I mean, for me, like this, this, um, I mean, I knew the world wasn't a level playing field before the pandemic, but I think that the extent to which it's not level became really striking to me during the pandemic. So like kind of unthinking this idea of, okay, everybody starts out (laughs) with a fair shake and the system is basically working as we want it to work. I mean, that has been kind of removed from my mental model. And so I think, you know, paying attention, you know, it may not be the same thing for everybody, but paying attention to how your what ideas have been subtracted during the pandemic and and at all times is perhaps the most powerful way to make use of this tool. I was interested in subtracting for the following. And I know that okay. this sounds a little bit, how shall we say, pessimistic. But remember, you know, I am the New Yorker, so I have to just kind of grab hold of that and embrace it. I was thinking about all these extraneous relationships that are exhausting to maintain yeah, yeah. that don't feed you. I had a friend um, many years ago who would say to me, like, you, you have all these people in your life. And she goes, you know, you should just surround yourself with people who water your garden that like are just there for you, who help you grow. Mm-hmm. And they shouldn't be you shouldn't be like working so hard. I mean, there's there are certain things we have to do. Right. There are certain Social obligations, for sure. Family obligations, for sure. But that the vast majority, if you just say no thank you, it's actually going to make you happier. So I took from this book two things. One was that the subtraction is also, you know, you're allowed to say no thank you. And you can kind of not like break up with a friend, but, you know, like limit the time that you're spending with people who really aren't helping you or who are not not helping you, but like feeding your soul in some way. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I also thought about my work life, which is the mental pruning, the amount of time that I spend on certain things that don't really serve me or the mission that Mark and I have for our shows. Right. Right. Like I can't keep just adding more stuff into the mix without figuring out to give myself and to ourselves some relief. So I think that those were two things that really stuck with me. I feel like I sort of knew that, but the way that you put it together and you sort of, I don't know, you you were like the connective tissue that you provided was really helpful. So I, I so appreciate that. Okay, that is it for uh, the show today. If you would like to check out the work of Lighty Klotz, check out the book. It's Subtract, The Untapped Science of Less. And if you would like to figure out how to maybe figure out how to declutter your financial life, why don't you give us a holler? It's Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Or if you're on our website, all you need to do is hit the contact button. Do something nice for someone else today and practice this. Just think about it. Grit, growth, grace. Put a little gratitude in there too. It'll make you feel better. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. 